Seamus challenges Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship at WWE's Clash at the Castle. More fallout from the announcement of NXT Europe. Former NXT UK stars have been announced for appearances across the UK and Europe. RKJ has defeated Will Ospreay to become the new RevPro UK undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Hello and welcome. This is T and Tice, the Great British Wrestling Podcast for Great British Wrestling, as featured on Bodyslam.net and the Jonas Podcasting Network. We're winging it. This week, because normally I, I, I send Mr. Daniel Allen about 15 pages of written up news stories. Well, we don't have that this week. Uh, I, I've got a, I, I've got a list of stuff that we can talk about and we will be looking stuff up as we do it. Uh, hello, everyone. This is the entire the great. British. Oh, I've done that already. Sorry, I'm losing my mind already. Uh, this is basically going to be two friends chatting about what's happening in the British and European wrestling news. And um, it's a slightly different way than we do it. We will be returning to our normal scheduled programming next week. But um, this week, let's just have a little bit of a natter. Indeed. I've just been swamped. I haven't had time. And I think this week's going to be a lot of fun. Let's talk about Clash of the Castle first, then, I guess. Sheamus versus Walter. Intercontinental Championship. Well, hey. Yeah, Walter's going down in 18 seconds. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. No. no. It should be hard hitting as hell because Seamus likes to hit hard. Walter hits hard. I, I can imagine Seamus's white chest is going to be very, very red. Yeah, Seamus is white. There's going to be blood coming out of Seamus's chest because when you're usually that pale, you, you, you tend to split a little bit easier as well, don't you? <laughs> But it's going to be a great match. It's great to see the Intercontinental title being taken seriously. Yes, it is. Um, it's the first time it's been um, represented on a pay-per-view in quite a long time, I believe. Yeah, I think I saw WrestleMania, not this year, but last year's WrestleMania. So that was the last time it was actually featured on a premium live event. Man. Which sucks because the match that Walter and Nakamura had was really, really good. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Nakamura and Walter have been absolutely killing it on SmackDown. Uh, now, do you put, do you have Sheamus go over in this match or do you keep the title on Walter? Because there's two thoughts on this. I won, keep the title on Walter. Let's make the, because look at what he did for the NXT UK Championship. He could do that for the Intercontinental title as long as he's given a long, dominant reign. On the other side of the fact, uh, Irishman in Wales. And this would get Seamus the um, fact that he would have won all the championships. That like too. Grand Slam champion. That too. So, Mr. Daniel Allen, you're the book of man. Well, I always get well, it wrong. What are you going to book? How are you going to book it? Seamus has been saying he wants to retire for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Do you think this could be his swan song match at home? Or as close to at home as they're ever going to get in a <laughs> in the UK or Ireland? Yeah, I, I, as I say, there is that school of thought of having Seamus go over. He's going to get a huge reaction from... Uh, Yes, it's not Wales. I mean, sorry, yes, it's in Wales, not Ireland. But I'm sure there's going to be plenty of Irish fans that are going to make the trip over to Wales uh, to for this event. And it would be a big, big win for him. And as you say, it gets him that grand slam. But I, as I say, I love the thought of making the Intercontinental Championship a major title once again. And I think... For it to be a major title once again, it needs to be held for a long time by one person dominantly and him making that belt feel important. What do you think? I agree with you 100%. I would like Walter to hold the belt. Gunther. Yeah. Gunter, sorry, yeah, uh, that is a good point. I was calling him Gunther. Uh, sorry. 
Gunfa. Uh, please do not smack our chests. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be a hard hitting crash. It's going to be a great match. And well, it's going to be going to be great for the home crowd. He, I great think either the result's going to be great for the home crowd because I think even the Irish fans out there and the Welsh fans, they, they, you know, everyone loves Walter. How can you not love Walter? Yeah. No, it'll be good. So, of course, we did do a brief special when the news was first uh, came out. Was of course NXT UK is being rebranded now. It will be relaunched in twenty twenty three. No date given other than 2023. So it could be December 2023 for all we know. Uh, as a, you know, I think as I mentioned on the thing, I disheartened and I'm heartbroken for all of those uh, wrestlers that have been part of NXT UK and that have been let go. I do think bringing it back at some point NXT UK, we do know that some of the talent uh, apparently have been told that, you know, once we're up and running, you know, we'll come and see you. We don't know who those talents are. No one's really been mentioned in that case. We just apparently, according to the news, there are people who have been told that they'll be welcome back once NXT Europe does launch. So, Mr. Daniel Allen... I'm going to put the booger hat back on you. And I'm going to say, if you could, Uh and you would set with bringing five of the guys released so far from NXT UK back for NXT Europe, who would you pick and why? To bring back, my first one would be Amel. Um... I still can't understand why she wasn't immediately part of the main roster. I think she's fantastic. I think she's a draw. I think she can wrestle. She can do everything. And Mel would be my number one. And she is European. Yeah. Bonus. Um, my next one uh, would be Mark Andrews. Um, he has got all of the experience, all of the talent. Um, he was having great matches across NXT UK. He's got experience wrestling the American style, wrestling the European style. And I think he would be, um, again, a, a no, no questions asked, get him back ASAP. Oliver Carter would be my third choice. Um, with his Swiss Garnet heritage, he again offers a good European aspect to it. Um, he was having great matches. He was beating all of De Familia. Um, and the fans loved him. Next one's a bit of a controversial um, rampage. Mm-hmm. Didn't do that much while he was there. He was off for a long time with the injury. I think he's still got a lot of potential, and I think he's a great big man. So I'd also resign rampage. And finally, Lizzie Evo. Now, Eliza Alexander had only just got started. Um, but I truly think that she has huge potential um, as an NXT Europe star, so she would be my fifth. Yeah, okay. Uh, if I was to pick five to resign, uh, I would bring Tamer Man back as well. Uh, again, the European is there. Uh, Oliver Castle would definitely be on my list as well. So would Amal. Uh, as would now, she never. Uh, I think she only made one or two uh, appearances as, as Jobber, and then some background appearances. As a young lady called Mila Schmidt, uh, mm-hmm. who's from France. I would bring her back again for that European connection. Uh, if you're going to bring back Mark Andrews, I'm going to bring back Flash to team with him again because I think uh, I think they right now are best suited as staying together as a tag team for me. Uh, now, I did put a list together, and you can go see it on bodyslam.net of 10 European wrestlers that I think that I certainly would uh, be booking, signing for NXT Europe. And they are the following Tristan Archer, 
he was the oldest member of the group uh, of the list that I put together uh, of about 36 years old now but he has been incredible as late and you know for all of the the idea of bringing up young talent you still need to have a veteran head there for these guys to work with similar for the reason i'm guessing you put rampage brown in yeah uh these younger guys are still going to need some experienced guys to work with and i think tristan archer is easily one of the best talents in europe right now he has been killing it with great matches against axel tiska jonathan gresham and Jan simmons just been particular highlights recently alice inc uh swedish uh the scandinavian dragon she has a background in traditional martial arts as well as mma and she is an absolute badass she looks like an absolute badass uh she competed she was the first female to compete for the scandi in, in the scandi invitational and she won it so she is an absolute force to be reckoned with marius Al Arnie. Now, he's one of the stars that really, for me, uh, kept WXW Germany when they were having the no fan shows. When I was first getting into WXW Germany via the WWE Network. Uh, so whilst they have these no fan shows, he was the guy that was really stood out to me. He was on, I think, an undefeated streak of about 21 matches before going on to win the championship. Uh, he had some great title defences in particular. His two matches against Bobby Gums were just, just sublime. I absolutely loved them. Uh, physical, hard-hitting. Uh, it's just a shame there were no fans there at the time. He's been injured recently, but uh, I hope he gets back to it soon. He would definitely be on my list of guys. Peter Tahani, uh, you've heard me talk about him before. He is an exciting prospect coming out of Hungary. Extremely athletic. Massive high flyer, phenomenal talent. Just uh, Denmark super so superstar Carlos Zamora uh, also has some Spanish heritage in there. Hence Carlos Zamora uh, MMA background experience. Again, uh, he recently became the Body Slam Wrestling champion. Uh, you can check him out on Body Slam uh, Wrestling mainly, uh, but he has been branching out uh, into Europe, including the UK. Uh, you'll need a tag team, and I went with Senza Volto and Gil Blanc. Uh, the French luchadors, uh, they are phenomenal. I think they'll be great for younger audiences. Uh, you always respond well to high flying luchadors, and both of these guys are just insanely good. Jern Simmons. Uh, 30 years old he is six foot tall and weighs well into the 220 plus pounds range and i am surprised he's never wwe have not come a calling for him already he just absolutely looks like a beast he wrestles like a beast and he is a three-time wwx champion Stephanie Mays, uh, she's uh, very inexperienced, uh, well, experienced to some of the people on the list, only four years experience so far, has a kickboxing background and came up through the WWX Academy. Golden Boy Santos, well, he literally looks like he's been carved out of marble and based on a Greek god. And he's six foot four inches and again, well into 220 pounds. He's going to be everything, uh, the WWE love he's just somebody uh with bags of talent as well uh capturing the wxw academy cup and finally uh the swedish born turkish assassin endokara one of the fastest wrestlers you will ever see don't believe me go check out his stuff youtube endokara he is phenomenally quick and an amazing performer as well they would definitely be 10 people, um, well, technically 11, 10 people I would definitely sign if I was to book NXT Europe. There are two names that you've missed there, in my humble opinion. I agree with all of the ones you've picked, thoroughly. 
I'm, um, I'm shorter in my next ten. I'm I'm guaranteeing it, but go for it. Maggot. Mm. Um, he's entertaining. Fans love him. He's got a good look. He's a great wrestler. Maggot. And LJ Cleary. Massive. Now, when I was putting together that list, I did purposely leave out any UK talent or anybody who was actually signed to a long-term deal, because I know Tristan Archer did make NXT UK appearances, but mainly as an enhancement talent. I think he only made like three appearances total. Uh, but, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, now, my next list, LJ Cleary is on them, because I did, I've already actually put 10 more names down for people who I would bring in. Uh, Norman Harris, Arrows of Hungary, Carlos Roma, Killer Kelly, Daz Black, Rotten Flot, Orshi, Robbie X, LJ Cleary, and Francesco Akira. Now, I know a couple of them are slightly bigger names, in particular Killer Kelly, who's a knockout right now, so you'd have to wait for her contract to come available again, but Portuguese native, absolute badass. Uh, Francesco Akira, of course, with the United Empire, New Japan wrestler at the moment, but again, that moment, that contract came again, available an amazing Italian superstar, have to sign him. Carlos Roma is the former partner to a kid, uh, so he would certainly be there. But I put three U- free UK talents this time in LJ Cleary, Daz Black, and Robbie X. But there's so much talent out there. <laughs> there really is. There really is. Um, maybe I'll do my five that I think they should sign next week. Yes, go for it. No, no, well, do it, do it now. Five, okay. five people you think they should bring into NXT Europe? No. Five that I think they should bring into NXT Europe are Robbie X, Callum Newman. Get him now while he's young. <laughs> Get him in there. Get him in the system. Um, LJ Cleary, Mariah May. Um, yes. I'm amazed Mariah May's not been in NXT UK before. Um, she's absolutely fantastic. Great look, great wrestler. And Kanji. Fantastic, fantastic wrestlers. Now, you mentioned Maga earlier. Uh, now, you know, he didn't actually make either of my list. And I think Maga is phenomenal. You know, I absolutely love Maga. I just don't think he fits the WWE mold. Of course, the WWE mold may change. Uh, but I think you'd have to keep his current persona you'd need to keep the music that he has right now. You could, as I say, because even that's a big part of what MAGA is, just being able to clap along with that incredible little guitar. It's just, and you can't change MAGA at all. <laughs> just <laughs> couldn't. He's just so weird and wonderful right now. Uh, but uh, there's some, obviously, Worlds Collide, NXT UK... Titles are going to be unified. Why didn't you tell me about that? Yeah, so far announced, we have Bron Breaker versus um, the amazing Tyler Bates, the first and last NXT UK um, champion. Um, that should be a very, very good match. And mm. I genuinely have no idea which way it will go. No, because you could push Bron to the main roster and have Tyler Bate come in and just take the title and uh, put him on top because you, they may still feel like Tyler Blake at 25 still maybe has a year or two for main NXT. Maybe. I don't know. We shall see. And then the women's title match has been announced, which will be Mako Satomura versus um, uh, Liv, Liv Morgan. No, Ro- uh, Rose, sorry. Um, Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose. Always get those two things um, And Blair Davenport. And Blair Davenport has managed to intersperse herself into this as well, so at least we know who's going to take the pinfall. Yeah. And then you've got the tag titles probably going to be in the same situation, given what happened when Gallas challenged uh, Brooks and Jensen at, the, at NXT last night. I think that was ended in a count out. So Gallas won, but didn't get the titles. So I'm assuming they'll do the same triple threat. Maybe, and then put in Pretty Deadly. Ooh, make it a fatal four-way. 
Yeah. I like that idea. Or if not them, Grizzled Young Vets. Yeah, there's there's a lot of very good British talent there. Um, let's use them. Indeed. Uh, now, NXT UK Championship. Just a little bit disappointed because that is such a beautiful title. I mean, it's one of the best titles in wrestling. Best looking, without doubt. Now, I believe you've had a good idea of a way that we can keep the NXT UK Championship going, even without NXT UK. Yeah, I think we should get rid of the Hogwarts Cup, the uh, the British Rules Trophy or the Heritage Rules Trophy, if you like. I think they should get rid of that, make the NXT UK title the NXT Heritage title and i think they should continue to have heritage rules matches and use that as a championship belt i think it's a great idea i really do indeed now of course the worst part about this whole nxc europe uh nxc uk closure is of course the incredible talents that have been released uh but it's not taken people long to uh, start making some announcements. I've got a whole list of uh, guys that are being announced right now. Uh, start in with Ashton Smith, who's going to be at PCW. Mm-hmm. Wrestling, uh, well, it's just PCW wrestling now. Uh, what date is that going to be on? September 23rd, so literally the day of, I think, when most NXT UK talents, uh, their non-compete clauses will come to an end September 23rd. So to the day, Ashton Smith will be uh, competing for PCW, and it will be against PCW regular Philip Michael, because Smith grew up in the Liverpool Northwest area uh, in and around Lancaster. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man has been announced for TNT Extreme Wrestling Extreme Fields. What a great show for Man to be at. Yeah, great to have him back. Also in that same sort of um, uh, TNT, we have announced Ali Catch versus Millie McKenzie um, for GCW's Liverpool show. Yes, uh, so the GCW Liverpool show is going to be on the 16th of September, of course, in Liverpool. Uh, she's also been announced for Pro Wrestling Eve. Now, she's actually going to be competing on the 1st of September, and uh, Nina Samuels will also be competing. Uh, I do think with some talents, I believe any dates that were agreed with independent companies prior to the closure can still work those dates because they were pre-agreed. Now, yeah, I don't that... know that for a fact, but I'm kind of make, well, making a big assumption here. That Eve main event is Jetta, Millie McKenzie and Charlie Morgan versus Emerson Jane, Nina Samuels and Lizzie Evo, uh, the 229. And that is going to be brilliant. Yeah, going to be a massive match. Uh, it's going to be... Super, that is, as I say, 1st of September. Uh, she is also going to be at Elevation Wrestling in Leicester. Uh, their Unchained show, she'll be facing uh, a fatal four-way for the Elevation Women's Championship. Uh, Harley Harris, the champion. Eden and ZZ Jackson. Uh, she has also been announced for Progress's California Mountain Snake in Birmingham, 25th of September. Mark Andrews has been announced as well. Yeah, he's going to be wrestling for Slam Masters Wrestling at the Brawl at the Banking Hall on Sunday, October the 2nd against Kid Lycos. How insane is that? That's just going to be a great match. And that's the same show you're going to have Nico Allen, Angelo uh, versus 
or eight, it's blank on me. Nico Angelo versus Ace Austin, Impact Superstar. So that's going to be a massive match. Uh, Brendan White versus Man Like the Reese. And I've just seen uh, uh, World Boar, Mike Kitchman, will also be there. Oh, World Boar is also going to be at New Wave Wrestling's show on the 11th of September against James Ellis at Roth in Wales. Indeed. I also believe Mike Hitchman will be returning to regular training sessions over at New Wave Academy, or he definitely has one session coming up soon on uh, this week. Oh, just, just, just this week, he'll be down teaching at New, uh, New Wave Pro Wrestling, of course, which was the former Dragon Pro, so... Uh, he's mm-hmm. back doing that. Uh, he's also going to be in Poland for the first time in over two years. Uh, this is actually on the 17th of September for KPW. I don't know the what the acronym may be, but it's KPW in Poland. Uh, Primate is also going to be there. So NXT UK stars heading off to Europe. Kenny Williams is holding uh, seminars with Fife Pro Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shaw Samuels has had a couple of matches announced so far. Uh, one of which is going to be for Hammerlock Wrestling, where he's going to be facing Doug Williams on the 29th of October. Uh, and that is at the Maidstone Leisure Centre. That would be a beautifully placed match. Mm, two absolute superstar veterans there. Charles Samuels, Doug Williams. Going to be a great match to look forward to. Amir Jordan is going to be uh, returning to North Wrestling NCL. And he's going to be staying for a bit. Uh, Rohan Raja has got a tour set for Canada. Uh, really? Yep. That's he's excellent. He's going to be taking himself off to Canada. Canada tour in the works for October, early November. And he's excited to share more details on that soon. Amel. Amel has been added or she will be challenging for the WXW uh, Women's Championship as part of a triple threat match with champion Baby Allison and Calypso. Uh, Baby Allison and Calypso have been feuding for a couple of matches now with Calypso picking up a win at APC Catch in Paris, non-title match. Uh, she then picked up a uh, Calypso picked up a win over Baby Allison by countout in a championship match for WXW Germany. Uh, So they will be at the Femme Fatale show 1st of October during the World Tag Team Festival. I will be there to see this match live. Uh, As I say, Amel versus Baby Allison versus Calypso. Something to look forward to. Indeed. And uh, it's, as we say, it's heartbreaking knowing that these guys did and throughout oh well you know they're free to work back on the indies a lot of people's dreams still is to work for the wwe uh you know aw may exist yes we you know new japan and all that still exists but in a lot of people's minds and eyes and for will be for a long time to come still wrestlemania main event is going to be the thing that literally every wrestler probably wants to achieve at some point, I'm not saying every well, 98% of wrestlers, there may be a few that may think that they don't want, uh, but I, I bet a lot of those people that say, Oh, I don't want to be signed to WWE or main event WrestleMania anyway, don't lie to us. You would love to be signed by the WWE, you would love to main event WrestleMania. Just admit the truth, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you probably the reason you got interested was WWE. It might not be, I'm not saying because they aren't the only ones, but most likely it's been WWE. And uh, so let's not act like it's not 
Uh, I think that's about all of the major names that I've seen so far that have uh, mentioned they are back. Uh, I know uh, Sam Gradwell, he's put posts out there that he is available from 23rd, same for uh, Jack Stars and a few others. And if there is anybody we have missed, uh, do apologise, but I think we should uh, move on. Let's move on to Will Ospreay. <clears throat> right. Where to start? Let's start with the fact that he made it all the way to the G1 finals. He That's defeated, a long way to make it. He did. He defeated Tetsuya Naito in uh, the semi-finals. Great, sh- great match. Uh, he then defeated... Uh, sorry, he was then defeated by the Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada, in another, another credible, incredible, incredible match that got him another five-star and over review from Mr. Dave Meltzer. So he's now two ahead of Kenny Omega. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, and, I, and I put it out there. Have you watched this match yet? Because I challenge you to watch this match and tell me that Will Ospreay is not the best wrestler in the world right now. You did challenge me to. And I can safely say that I still think Kenny Omega is the best wrestler in the world right now. However, I will put aside that Osprey is definitely having some of the best matches. All right. Well, uh, if you still don't buy that one, then I'm saying watch the Speedball Mike Bailey match at uh, the first night, night one of the 10th anniversary show, which showed just how adaptable Will Ospreay is and why he's the best all round performer. I shall look forward to watching that. It's an amazing match as well. Uh, so is his uh, bloody match with RKJ, which was. Oh, Phenomenal, just phenomenal, just really insanely good. RKJ really smashed it out of the park as well. And uh, yeah, new well done to RKJ. Well done. We have a UK based non New Japan Red Pro Champion. Yeah, for the first time in God knows uh, when it's. Well, in fact, I think since the belt's existence, it's the first time it's not being held by somebody from New Japan. Uh, but yeah, good on, good on uh, RKJ. He, as I say, this match is absolutely insanely credible, uh, and I don't want to spoil it too much because it's just so good that everyone should just go out of their way to watch it uh there's some referee schmods a couple of things that to be honest i felt the match probably could have done without didn't need it uh they could have just had the, the great match that it was without those bumps i don't feel like they added massively to it but yeah, Will Ospreay toasting him afterwards. Uh, I did love uh, Will Ospreay's passionate uh, post match promo. Uh, I did love the fact that when he talked about he was heartbroken, like many others, and very saddened by the fact that all these guys have lost their jobs from NXT UK. But he then went on to remind that all of these people from NXT UK. And when they return, they need to wipe their feet at the door, shake the hands of everybody in the locker room, and say thank you for keeping the scene alive. Yep. Yep, they, they really do. And look at it this way. We will have a plethora of new matches. Yes, we will. We'll have amazing, so many great new matches. Of course, saying that, Will Ospreay will probably not be performing for Repro UK. Okay, again, for a long while, for a little while at least. I think there's just so much on his schedule coming up with New Japan, All Elite, and so forth. Uh, he's going to be constantly flying back from America to Japan. I don't think he needs to continuously add in stops to the UK as well. But uh, my, my reviews of the show are Four Sugars for the Night One. Uh, 
four and a half sugars for night two. Go out your way to watch Luke Jacobs versus Francesco Akira, which was just absolutely incredible. Go out your way to watch the Luke Jacobs versus... Oh. God, what's so the name? Tony Deppen, yeah. That, again, was insanely good. Uh, the Speedball Mike Bailey versus Leon Slater is one of the most... If you love high-flying, high-action matches, you're going to love this because it was just, again, insanely good. Got a standard ovation from a 1,000 people in the York Hall. Leon Slater, 17 years old, got a standing ovation from the Repro UK crowd. A thousand people got on their feet and applauded this young man. It was insane. Uh, the Aussie Open versus Destination Everywhere was a very good match. So we showed Umino versus Suji. Uh, their strap match, very entertaining. Young Maya Matthews really put on a great performance against young Chantel Jordan, who then went on to put on another great performance against Kanji uh, on night two. There are some, you know, I could keep going on, but the Greedy Souls, their big win over Destination Everywhere. Uh, I, yeah, fr- four sugars, four and a half sugars. Do yourselves a favor, Rev Pro on demand. You can get a two week free trial to watch it. You don't even have to pay. <laughs> So go out your way and watch that, uh, definitely. Uh, but we'll stick with Will. Just a aside quickly. Sorry. Um, you mentioned there the Greedy Souls. Um, we did a bit of an interview with Brendan White this week. Um, we did. You can watch it now on YouTube, listen to it now wherever you get your podcasts. And I've got to say, he is a lovely guy. Um, really good interview, really good look into the Welsh scene in wrestling. And um, well worth having a little look at. Yeah, it says uh, some lovely things about some great performers in and out of Wales. Talking about the uh, tag team wrestling, of course. So we talked about matches against CPF, Sunshine Machine, Smoking Aces. Just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, big win for the Greedy Souls. Thank you for coming on our show, Brendan White, because he doesn't do podcasts very regularly. So we were very blessed to have him on our show. And uh, yeah. Absolutely, yes, you're right. What a guy. What a nice guy. Very nice guy. Okay, uh, so sticking with Will Ospreay sort of for New Japan Royal Quest. Uh, it's, of course, 1st of October, 2nd of October. Such bad timing. Yeah, <laughs> not a great time. Uh, I didn't even realise the London Marathon's on the 2nd. <laughs> so, oh, God. Um, but they have announced the stardom are going to be taking part. Yeah, uh, they will be uh, a part of the show. Uh, however, stardom are taking part, but there will be no stardom performers at the show. Oh, I missed that part. Yes, yes. Uh, there will actually be see. Stardom are kicking off their IWGP Women's Championship, which is going to be in conjunction with New Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're kicking off the tournament at Royal Quest. However, it will be two European performers who will be in that first match there'll be another international performer who's got a buy uh, so whoever wins this match from Europe will go on to face whoever this other international opponent will probably be most likely you'll probably have Jamie Hater versus somebody that would be nice Jamie Hater versus Casey would be great but I'm oh, sure there are other, sure there are other great matches that you certainly could have, and you'll probably find it'll be Tony Storm as the other international due to the fact that uh, both Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter have a long history with stardom, which is the reason I chose uh, these. Of course, that could be Stevie Turner as well. It could she, well be. She, she has history with uh, them. Uh, so does Zia Brookside. Actually, I forgot to mention Zyra Brookside. She's going to be at Hammerlock. Well done. 
There we go. Just remembered that. Uh, but yeah, so somebody like that could come in. Uh, Millie McKenzie, although she was at Sendai, not. Uh, she's got Japanese experience. But uh, so, yes, Stardom are going to be involved in the Royal Quest. However, there will be no Stardom performers unless things change and unless there's something else that I haven't seen uh, by the looks of it. Yeah, it will be uh, the international bracket, which will be competed over by two European women. There we go. There we go. Uh, but uh, we've had uh, many, many people that have been announced for the Royal Quest. Uh, including Real Osprey himself, will be there. Uh, I thought he was going to probably defend his championship again, his US championship against David Finley, but they're doing that at the show prior. Mm. So that that kind of shocked me just a little bit, I guess, uh, to, to see that. But, uh, you know, I'd probably give a Shingo because... Every time Shingo and Will Ospreay have a match, they get five stars or above. I'm not kidding. There's not one. I think I think there's maybe one Will Ospreay versus Shingo Tagaki match that doesn't actually have a five star rating from Dave Meltzer. Every other match that they've had literally is rated that highly. They are bloody good matches. Uh, but uh, just saw Tomohiro Ishii has been announced. Hiromi Takashi will be in action. They can get the wrestlers there. It'll just be a case of whether they can get the fans there. Well, Kasucha Okada will be there. So will Zack Sabre Jr. You know, these are the names that can get you there. <laughs> yeah, they surely can bring in the crowd, you would have thought. I mean, Will Ospreay, yes, most of us, uh, you know, some Red Pro UK fans are like, oh, I don't have to go to the show. I've been able to see him with Red Pro UK for the last few, uh, what some calls it. But, uh, you know, Zack Sabre Jr., when was the last time the UK audience has had a chance to see Zack Sabre Jr. in the ring? When was the last time the UK audience has had a chance to see Kazuchika Okada in the ring? Her Probably last time you can right? Yeah, so there's more than enough to try and drive fan interest. But as you say, with so many things working against them, London Marathon, uh, train strikes are going to be happening during that week. You've got the issue with, you know, almost one and a half thousand uh, UK fans going to be at the Doncaster Dome. Uh, got big show at Soft Pro. You've got UK fans like me who might be flying in out to uh, Germany to go to watch the uh, World Tag Team Festival. Uh, all in all, there's an awful lot on that weekend. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Uh, but as you say, some of the names I've just mentioned there, there's enough to drive interest. It's just how much and uh, will they get it? Fingers crossed for them because we don't want to see any show fail. No, uh, now, uh, they get that is uh, as we say, October 1st, October 2nd. Uh, before that, NJP Global, uh, have the burning spirit in Kobe, where Will Ospreay will be defending his US uh championship against David Finley in the main event. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, they, uh Zach Sabre Jr. will be teaming with Tai Chi and uh, as the dangerous techers once more to face Naito and Sonata. And and Gideon Gray is going to be part of the show as well. Unveiled as the mastermind behind the United Empire, one of the greatest British Hill managers there is right now. I'm going to miss him on... Uh, I hope he doesn't quite move because uh, I will definitely miss him on RevPro UK commentary. He's one of my favourite parts of the RevPro. In fact... <laughs> He's the only part of the Red Bull UK team I like on commentary. <laughs> he deserves this. He has made himself the most hated man in Red Pro. He is the guy you love to hate. And um, I wish him all the best in his time with New Japan. I really hope it goes well for him. Yeah, no, uh, I must admit, because Will Ospreay, it almost seemed like they were going to be pushing for Will Ospreay to go face. Uh, but I wonder, with this recent loss, 
bringing Gideon Gray in if we're going to see the United because usually United Empire they never get involved in each other's matches I wonder if we'll start to see that possibly change under Gideon Gray's and I wonder if Yoda Suji is going to join United Empire oh, I do hope so um, United Empire's um, Aussie Open are actually going to be wrestling for TNA um, this weekend as well yeah against Motor City Machine Guns, Machine Guns. Yeah, I love the Motor City Machine Guns. They're an amazing tag team. They're gonna, they're gonna get squashed by Aussie Open. <laughs> so we've talked about the Japanese wrestlers coming to the UK, but we have some UK wrestlers heading to Japan as well as Gideon Gray. Because let's not forget, he can wrestle. He certainly um, can. Kid Lycos is heading to DDT. Yeah, he is. Uh, this came out. Uh, towards the end of last week or just very recently come out. But yeah, uh, he'll be reuniting with his drunken yeah. calamari king friend. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what he's going to be doing. He'll be reuniting with uh, Chris Brooks. I believe a tag team match has been announced already. I'm not sure if they've announced the match yet, but I know that they've definitely announced that. And of yes. course, go on. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, but uh, Curran Noir has also been announced that he will be joining DDT uh, Pro. Uh, so, yeah, as you say, UK stars heading out to DDT Pro. I suppose we do need to make room for a bunch of new stars coming back to the scene. Well, we do indeed. Um, it is the next logical step for Cara Noir. Um, and he's Kid gonna... Lycos can do anything. <laughs> yeah, him and Kid Lycos too are going to get over with the DDT audience something fierce. I'm not kidding you. They are what DDT like is well, right up their alley for uh, Cara Noir and Kid Lycos. I'll put it that way. Well, Cara Noir has been practicing for his Japanese interviews for years. Saying nothing. But it should be perfect. Oh, I hope they really buy into that. Do you remember what the, the original story behind Cara Noir? He was too violent for the ballet. And uh, do you reckon you know they're going to push that? I and mean, it's just going to be, uh, that should be good. something special. Mm -hmm. Um, sticking with international news, Nick Aldis is going to be taking on Flip Gordon at NWA 74. This will be Aldis's first match back after a few months off after his arguments um, with NWA owner, Mr. Billy Corgan. Mm -hmm. um, sure. it's, it's going to be a great match. Uh, not a should be, it will be a great match. Yeah, I don't agree with Flip Gordon and his political views or any of it any of his other views, but um, he's a phenomenal, uh, talented wrestler. He's just uh, springy, high-flying, and yep. uh, should be a great man. I think they have her face before on Ring of Honor. I believe you're right. Uh, I just found out that uh, the dates that uh, Cara Noir and Kid Lycos seem to be in Japan are 18th and 25th of September. Cool. So I get a nice week out there. Yeah, Kurikan. Uh, uh, it seems to be a tournament. Kurikan tournament. Oh. Kurikan Hall. There we go. Okay. Um... Uh, well, I, I've got another international star that recently came to the UK. Mm -hmm. And that is one Primo Cologne. Yeah. Well, the, I, uh, I'm surprised by this one. The brother of... Uh, Carlos Cologne, of course, uh, Carlito, sorry, the son of Carlos Cologne, the brother of Carlito, Primo. He uh, apparently arrived at on behalf of world champion Simon Miller, uh, getting involved in some sort of match to involve Chris Hotshot Adams, and I can't make out who the other opponent person is. And for which company was this? Uh, it was Ultimate Pro Wrestling. So this was their show at Weymouth recently on the 18th of August. 
I don't think it was Adam Max said, but uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Primo Cologne made his uh, home of pro wrestling. What a surprise! Yeah, we were. Um, another big announcement of an American name coming to the UK next. Okay, one PW. Oh, yes, this is very, very tasty indeed from 1PW. They have announced their second show, and it is going to be in Lincoln mm-hmm. on Saturday, the 18th of February. And, and who's going to be at Morris, that show? Johnny 1PW. Wouldn't it just be Johnny Wrestling? <laughs> it could well be. John mm-hmm. Morrison and his wife, Tyre Valkyrie, will be in attendance at 1PW in Lincoln on Saturday, the 18th of February. Great yes. first name to call out. No turning back. Uh, the engine shed. Uh, yeah. Tickets are on sale now at 1PWTicks.com. And, Grab them uh, while you can, because as we've seen from the previous 1PW show, they will sell. They will sell out fast. Uh, the engine shed is a very nice looking arena by the looks of it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Very exciting news there. Uh, Canadian Vaughn Vertigo is going to be making an appearance for ICW once again. He is. He's going to be taking on Jason Reed, um, which should be a very good match. And that will be on the 11th of September. Yeah, at the. Uh, Fight Club taping, taping, sorry. Uh, So, yeah, uh, should be absolutely fantastic. Uh, A few other matches that have been announced for that is um, Moxie Malone versus Daisy Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Uh, Levi versus BT Gunn. Uh, Ravy Davy will be there. Uh, And Chris Bunkard versus Theodorus. That should be an interesting match, actually. Mm, yeah, that, that MMA versus the good match. typical wrestler. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, because you can, you can sort of like bring it to the amateur wrestling background and kind of let the two semi shoot on each other to get a match out of it. Because uh, Theodorus does have some amateur wrestling background. He is, of course, the Cypriot god or whatever he calls himself, god of wrestling. Elbow from Olympus. Anyway, I know Craig uh, Anthony is going to be making his second in-ring return match. Uh, it's going to be against Stevie James. Uh, mm-hmm. As I say, I- I'm so, so happy to have Craig Anthony back. Uh, part, he returned at Fear and Loathing very recently. And uh, he's going to be in the... He's, he's, gonna, he's hunting down Kez Evans. He wants that heavyweight title shot. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. And anyone that wants to take on Kez Evans, I will back. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you know, can't forget it was Kez Evans that broke uh, Craig Anthony's arms to put him out of action for all those bumps. Yeah, so, slammed uh, it in that rolled down door. And of course, ICW will, of course, be part of that uh, big wrestling weekend. Uh, we'll go through the that card next week on a big preview show for the whole wrestling weekend really uh you've got japanese star heading to pro wrestling e from tokyo joshi pro as their uh, partnership continues to grow grow yeah no, i guess that's a great way to put it yeah it continues to grow uh you've got Um, I've lost. I haven't got that information in front of me. I can't jump in and help. No, I've lost the young lady's name. Well, if you jump on Pro Wrestling and even go through a couple of their other matches that they've got, uh, which include Laura Timoteo defending the International Championship against Sky Smithson. Uh, this is, of course, their Thursday Night Riot show on the 1st of September. We alluded to this show as being uh, the show that 
Millie McKenzie will be returning to. Yeah. Completely. I'm having issues with my internet for some reason. It won't let me bring up all of their uh, details. Well, while you're talking about that, mm-hmm. looking it up, maybe I could mention um, Jordan Oliver has been announced for coming over to Supreme Extreme for TNT. He is. Yeah, that's going to be uh, an excellent, uh, going to be very intriguing matchup. Yeah, because he is going to be taking on Tate Mayfair. Um, so this should be really good because um, obviously we've got the experience of Jordan Oliver from his time in MLW and now in GCW um, coming along to take on Tate Mayfair, who is, of course, undefeated at the moment in um, TNT. Yeah, uh, looks set to be... Uh, an absolute cracking match. It's very, as you say, it's very interesting. I, I like the conflicting styles that the two will be bringing to the match. Uh, Jordan Oliver, uh, very high flying, very high risk. Tate Mayfair tends to keep his matches more grounded. Uh, likes to beat its opponents down as regards to uh, fly around the ring. <sighs> I have a serious case of the sneezes. Right. Uh, uh, other exciting um, news. Have you managed to find your Eve bit there? I I haven't. Uh, but other exciting news, of course, for TNT Extreme Wrestling uh, is their latest show has just gone up onto Pro Wrestling TV. Uh, this is Sirens Fury. Watched it yesterday, Three and a Half Sugars, absolutely fantastic. Uh, that is now available on demand after premiering last night. Uh, they also have a team. There's now three shows available uh, from TNT Extreme Wrestling. So if you're looking to get to know TNT Extreme Wrestling ahead of that big uh, Welsh show, go check them out. Pro Wrestling TV, no subscription free. It's free. Just watch the adverts. And shall we mention um, a little interview that we've just done, or should we keep that secret? No, yes. Later this week, we'll be releasing our Reign of Fire exclusive interview with the high flying, death defying member of Lycos Gym, Nico Angelo. Uh, great little interview. We just spoke to him about uh, what it's been like competing with TNT Extreme, Project X Match, and what it's going to be like to compete in front of his home crowd. And you get to hear exactly what he thinks of Tom Felwell ahead of their match. Ooh, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> it um, was a really fun interview. Absolutely fantastic guy. Definitely go recommend that. Check that out. Uh, great preview for Reign of Fire. SOS, uh, School of Slam, have announced a new partnership with CTW Portugal. Ooh. Uh, so we'll see some sort of talent exchanges with uh, Centro Trainos Wrestling. My knowledge of Portuguese wrestling is quite limited to that piece of news I've just heard. Mm. Uh, Golden Boy Santos is the man, Portuguese wrestler. David Francesco, of course, is uh, also came up in the Portuguese scene before uh, moving over here to the UK. Uh, yeah. We found out that the reason that Tegan Knox hasn't uh, been seen or competed as yet is due to the fact that she has been having visa issues. Hmm. I mean, she's mastercard. Hmm. Hopefully, uh, she'll get that resolved soon because Tegan Knox is a phenomenal performer and we would love to see her back in the ring at some point soon. Definitely. Um, we've got Warriors Come Out to Play coming up, the um, progress show. Yes, um, we do. Some amazing matches um, announced for that one. Uh, Kanji versus Laura Di Matteo, where if Kanji is disqualified, Laura Di Matteo will hold the belt. 
Yes, so this is the third time in four shows that Laura DiMatteo will challenge Karnji for the Progress Women's Championship. Uh, their last match, uh, one, Chapter 137, part of the Debbie Viper Tour, uh, codenamed Copperhead, Kanji was accidentally disqualified after she accidentally hit Laura DiMatteo with a chair. And of course, Laura DiMatteo says she purposely did this, and that is why the stipulation has been put on that even if Kanji gets disqualified, she will lose the title. Right. We also have Sunshine Machine versus the close personal friends team of Danny Black and Just Joe Lando. We have Callum Newman taking on Anthony Agogo. We have Eddie Dennis versus Maggot. Luke Jacobs versus Man Like Derice for the Atlas title. And Big Demo takes on Dan Maloney. Mm. It's a so, good-looking show. Yeah, Sunshine Machine will be making their third defense of the tag team championships. Uh, they actually been wanting to face the CPF for quite some time, and they looked to uh, try to set that match out, but they were interrupted by the Greedy Souls, and uh, that's why the Greedy Souls had their tag team match at Copperhead. Sunshine Machine re- retained. They went on to retain against Cottermouth, against Lycos Jim at Cottermouth, but now they finally get that match with the CPF boys that they were wanting from the offset. That looks to be super exciting. Anthony Agogo making his return so far undefeated in progress. Last time we saw him was that short, short match <laughs> where he defeated Tate Mayfair's in quick succession at the uh, 16 karat gold show. Callum Newman, of course, still looking for a singles win in uh progress uh despite a fantastic performance against malik in uh the 16 carat man like the reese gets his chance to face luke jacobs for the atlas championship in one-on-one after they were supposed to have one one match at copperhead but mark davis wanted to get involved so it was made a triple threat now man like the reese has his chance to go one-on-one Maggot versus Eddie Dennis. Uh, last time we saw Eddie Dennis in progress uh, was defeating Michael Ojo, uh, Michael Oko, uh, Michael Oku to retain the OJ, uh, the Progress World Championship. That was at Chapter One Hundred, unboxing live. He had to actually relinquish the title at the very next show. Maggot, let's see. You know, he, it's, it's amazing how much did progress fandom has uh, fallen in love with him. Lana Austin, Raven Creed finally gets their hands on Lana Austin in a one-on-one match. Lana's been doing everything she can to avoid this matchup, throwing obstacles such as Nightshade, Maxine Baylor and Lizzie Evo. Uh, Raven Creed's managed to overcome all of these. Now she finally gets a match and it's a straight jacket match. So that's going to be really interesting. And Big Demo, after that shocking, shocking uh, turn of events at Copperhead, where he defeated Chris Ridgway to become the Progress World Champion for his first time, he makes his first defense against Dan Maloney. This is going to Not be hot. his first defense. Oh, no, yes, you are quite correct. It'll technically be his second defense. Yes. Because... because... The- Go. He is doing what a world champion should do, and he is defending his progress title internationally. He is going to be taking on Kevin Koo for the progress world title um, at the Total Eclipse of the Heart show for Black Label Pro Wrestling. Yeah, it's going to be so fly, uh, straight after the match. He's going to be flying his way all the way to the UK. Uh, for his uh, matchup against Dan Maloney. And it's going to be a battle between him and Maloney. Uh, Heavy hitting match. Be interesting to see who comes out on top of that. So let's get our predictions in. Big Damo versus Dan Maloney. Dan. Damo. Maloney. Ooh. Lana Austin versus Raven Creed. Lana. Raven Creed. Kanji versus Laura DiMatteo. Really difficult to call. Going to go Laura DiMatteo. Do, do, do. 
Laura Di Matteo. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go with Laura Dimitero as well. Uh Maga versus Eddie Dennis. Eddie Dennis. I'm gonna go with Eddie Dennis as well. Man like the Reeds versus Luke Jacobs. Luke Jacobs. Luke Jacobs. Anthony Agogo versus Callum Newman. Sorry, Callum. Anthony Agogo. Yeah, sorry, Cal. Anthony Agogo. Uh, the CPF versus the Sunshine Machine. Sunshine Machine. Yeah, Sunshine Machine as well. Of course, this will be just Chad Lando's uh, first match back since his US tour. Uh, congratulations on absolutely killing it out there. Uh, heard your matches versus Blake Christian and Nick Wayne were absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Two last pieces, the European. Simon Miller has been announced for European promotion, Rings of Europe. Congratulations, Simon. Yeah. Uh, they tend to bring in a lot of British talents over at Rings of Europe. Uh, uh, here we go. It is on the 5th of November show, Wrestle Clash. Uh, Livy Grace. Uh, has also been announced for that show, as has Ragnar the Barbarian. Uh, will Cruz will be part of that show as well, British superstar, as will L.A. Taylor. Uh, before that, they've got an all-women's show, uh, which, again, a lot of UK performers on that one. That's Vienna Brawling on the 12th of October. And we'll see Lucia Lee, Laura Di Matteo, Alexis Falcon, and Mercedes Blaze all head out to Austria for Rings of Europe. Yeah. And our next news, I'm guessing, is the Passion Pro Cup. Oh, Passion. Oh, so there's going to be uh, two more bits of news then. Oh, boy, Corey McRae. Has been announced. Yeah, been announced. He's going to be part of that Passion Pro Cup. Uh, he's uh, this will be his third appearance now for yeah. the Passion uh, for Passion Pro, and it'll be part of the 2022 Passion Cup, uh, which will be eight performers for uh, first round matchups uh, with the Fatal Four Way. Final five of the performers have been announced so far, including Corey McRae, and that is Tristan Archer, yep, Malkai, yep, Kuro the Kid, mm-hmm. Corey McRae, yep, and Gullias, yes. And if you have a look on the poster for the Passion Cup, there is another British wrestler on the poster. On oh, the post for the Passion Cup, I haven't seen the Passion Cup pro so, uh, Who's on there? It would appear Connor Mills. Oh yes, Connor Mills, uh, alongside Tristan Archer on a Warshi, and oh, I've forgotten the young man on the right's name. Sorry, Dad. But uh, yeah, I, I really like Passion uh, Pro. What they've been doing in Hungary, uh, I believe it's been kind of set up by the Arrows of Hungary. They've been bringing in some just incredible performers across Europe into Hungary for these shows. Uh, as we just mentioned, Corey McRae uh, has been quite a regular forum. Uh, Charlie Stern recently made de- his debut against Peter Tarney, which is a match I desperately want to see when it's on YouTube. And then you've got, uh, as you say, yeah, Connor Mills looks set to be uh, part of it as well. Hopefully, He'll be part of the Passion Cup as well, because that would be be quite an interesting. I wonder. I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking they've got two Frenchmen there, and they've got two uh, Hungarians. So if we get Corey McCrae and Connor Mills, that could be two from England, and maybe like, then like two from Germany. And then you have them face off against each other and see who makes the two. Oh. Who knows what Passion Pro might be uh, do, doing. I, I definitely want to go see Passion Pro uh, next year because, uh, as I say, I definitely I love what they've been doing. And uh, we've had communication with them. 
Uh, so looking forward to that. No, the other bit that I was going to talk about was four more names that have been announced for the WXW Femme Fatale show. Uh, oh. These include Alice Inc., uh-huh. Anastasia Bardo, Marie De La Rosa, and Michelle Green. Uh, they'll be joining uh, Killer Kelly, Masha Slamovich, Orsi, Nikki Foxley, Ava Everett, and Ivor Koloski. You've also got the Women's Championship match itself. Uh, we mentioned it earlier. Amal versus... Sorry, Amal versus... Baby Allison versus Calypso. Uh, there'll be a... Single eight single show eight person tournament as well, and then one other match to then help spread that across the show. And as I say, I'm absolutely looking forward to being there. That is the first of October in Overhausen as part of the World Tag Team Festival. So I'll be there. So I'll be able to give you all the results fresh off the bat. Uh, anything else, Big Daddy Dan? I don't think so. Um, I'm very happy to have seen everything. Um, I think we didn't mention that tonight um, we've got the quarterfinals of the AEW World Trios Championship Tournament, which will feature Will Ospreay and Aussie Open versus Death Triangle of um, uh, obviously Penta, Phoenix, and Pack. So mm. we've got another British one there on top. Uh, I genuinely don't know with that one. I think. I'd like it to be um, Will Ospreay and Aussie Open, but I think Death Triangle are a more established team for them. Um, but yeah, I, I personally, again, I would agree with you. I would like it to be the United Empire. I would like it to be uh, Will Ospreay and Aussie Open. However, there's a couple of reasons why uh, uh, I don't think it will be. One, the one that you just mentioned, the fact that obviously... Death Triangle are an established team in AEW. The other one being keep Omega and Will Ospreay apart. Don't ruin it by putting them in a six-man tag match together. Uh, I don't don't spoil that. I mean, you could look at it as the other way. Well, it's going to tease it, but. Do you really want to let it go to waste like that? Their first two meeting in the ring for so long. I'm not sure that would be my preferred way to do it. I mean, it may be AW. You, know, you may want to do it just so Kenny Omega and uh, the Young Bucks win and get the pinfalls or, or whatnot over Australia's United Empire. But if I was Khan, I would keep them apart for now. Yeah. I no, I can understand that. Too big a money match to waste on. I mean, you could maybe do the whole match where they don't get in a ring together, where they're never legal at the same time. You, you say too big a money match to waste. What's the headline match for AEW this week? I don't know. The interim champion, John Moxley versus CM Punk champion, which was meant to be at the pay per view on the 4th, and has been moved to the free TV show. That's because CM Punk's still injured and isn't going to be uh, available in time. I, I don't know, I'm just saying I think it's because he's still injured, isn't going to be available, and they just want to get the title off of him. Mm, we shall see. We'll see, yeah. I mean, you know, as I say, 100%, I have no idea. They are un reported news they are opinions okay that that is not news that's entertainment and opinion <laughs> anyway with that said shall we just say it don't feed the trolls <laughs> <laughs>